why is this movie so weirdly popular, do you think? I think that it's because of the song at the very end. I really okay. think it's because of the song. I lot, a lot of people like um, the song at the very end. And there's a certain chemistry between Drew Barrymore and sure. Adam Sandler yeah. that I can't really explain, but I can see mm-hmm. and I can feel. And I guess everybody else can, too, because they went ahead to make more movies that were very rep- reminiscent mm-hmm. of this movie, like 50 First Dates um, was one it. of them. That mm-hmm. was like another hit. Mm-hmm. And they had, they both had the same energy that, you know, sort of sweet yeah. woman with um, sort of gentle but mm-hmm. funny guy mm-hmm. kind of dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works. Yeah. And it really worked for the late 90s, I think. Yeah, this is a 1998 mm-hmm. movie. And it's set in 1985, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I thought was really kind of interesting. Yeah. I did not, I've never seen this movie, even though I've been in wedding bands Mm -hmm. for a lot of my life. Mm -hmm. I never saw this movie because I always hated Adam Sandler. Mm, Why is that? Because he seemed like such a doofus. Yeah. But you kind of changed your mind about him recently, didn't you? I I liked him in the most recent um, basketball movie that he did. Uh I I did see the uh, PTA movie, Paul Thomas Anderson movie. On Cup Jams. Right, but mm. I was thinking of the, the so the Paul Thomas Anderson movie is mm. the earlier one where he's kind of at his breaking point. Mm-hmm. What is that movie? Oh, you mean uh, Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love, yeah. yes. That was a long time ago, though. That, that so, was like, but that, yeah, but that, yeah. up until then, I thought he was just a doofus. Right. And when he did that movie, I was like, I had to be drawn, kicking and screaming to see this movie. Everybody started talking about how great it was. Mm-hmm. And I saw it, and it was good. So... I still am not an Adam Sandler fan at all. Right. But I actually vehemently hated him. Right. Yeah. In 1998. I think a lot of people did. And I don't think anybody's necessarily an Adam Sandler fan. I think we just, he, he's there. And, you know, we <laughs> well, just. Well, he is kind of, of the guy, he plays the guy who is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's part of his. It, it kind of works because mm. there are a lot of guys in real life who just who are just there. Yeah, and Adam Sandler kind of represents that guy, mm-hmm. that average you know guy who's mm-hmm. kind of always there. Yeah, and he's not good or bad. He's not you know whatever. He's he's really just in the middle, and most people are like that. Okay, so and that's a, what he represents. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. he's an everyman. Except that I thought he was brilliant in Ankaja. <laughs> Yeah, that was Sorry. a good movie. Yeah. That was the Saffer Brothers, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I really I, I really did not like him, mm-hmm. and so I avoided this movie, mm-hmm. even though I was... I really do like Drew Barrymore. Mm, I love Drew Barrymore. And we we a, both like her. We both yeah. like her. This is, this is a period of time when she was at this really nice zone. She did a lot of movies during these years, I think. Yeah. There was like a maybe like a five to seven year period mm-hmm. when she was really at her peak and doing movie after movie after mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. She never did anything particularly genius, but she right. did music and lyrics, which I thought was a fine mm-hmm. film. We could do that one someday. Totally, yeah. She did uh, A Guilty Pleasure of Mine, which mm-hmm. I'm very embarrassed to admit that I, I know watched what it several is. times. What is it? Ever after. Yeah. yeah. And it was there was a period of time when it was on cable and it was just on every mm-hmm. day, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I just watch it just to yeah, watch her you talked about ever after a lot mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, I, I don't think i talked about it a lot but no we it's talked a guilty about, pleasure yeah, yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. it at one point yeah. yeah so yeah i i like her and mm-hmm. their chemistry does indeed work here yeah and i think you describe it well mm-hmm. so i i like this movie i thought some mm-hmm. of the humor didn't age well i'm not a big fan of comedies because they're not usually that funny to me i i true and I you're agree. kind of waiting for the yeah. obstacles. That, right. There's a lot of misdirection in this movie uh, where, you know, he has to see Drew Barrymore happy in her wedding dress. He doesn't know she's thinking about him. Mm. You know, and then the, and the then ex-fiance she his, comes back. Yeah. But he was drunk. Misunderstanding and he, yeah. there. And then Drew Barrymore goes to his house and finds his ex fiance Answers the door. Know, answers the, yeah, but there's a lot of misunderstanding. And then so she decides to go to Las Vegas to marry this douchebag. And because thinking that he had been, he had gone back together with his ex fiance Yes. And he gets a flight to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And the only flight 
available was first class. Mm-hmm. And so he ends up sitting in the same cabin as Billy Idol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whose music had been playing earlier in the yes. film. Yes. And this White was, wedding. And you forgot that this movie was shot in the 90s because you saw it and you were like, oh, he looks old. And I was like, yeah, he was older mm-hmm. by that time. Mm-hmm. But they had, I'm also used to film these days, movies these days, mm-hmm. using this de aging technology. Right. And they, Billy Idol just looked old. So he didn't look like 1985. Right. Billy right. Idol. <laughs> True. But that was kind of, that was kind of fun. And then, and then he sang the song to her that he wrote on the way over Grow Old with You. I okay. want to grow old with you. And I think that was sort of a weird, not a hit, but like a lot of people know that song. I didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was um, a surprisingly touching song, I think. Mm. It, it, yeah. it was a cute little song, and it was a surprise. There's something, some, it worked. Mm-hmm. That song, that scene, as cheesy and slapsticky as it was, it worked. Mm-hmm. And there's something about Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler and that song that somehow did the job, mm-hmm. and everybody liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Mm-hmm. And in the end, it just kind of makes you feel warm and fuzzy mm-hmm. inside, and that's what you want a movie to do. Mm-hmm. So Drew Barrymore didn't know the lyrics of the song mm-hmm. before he played it right. for the mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. So to give more of a oh a realistic reaction when she heard him singing the song. Yeah. Oh. Yeah.